What's up everyone and welcome to another cryptocurrency market update. In these videos you will learn how to use technical analysis to forecast price movements in your favorite cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and others and also see where we are looking to buy and sell these crypto assets ourselves. So let's get into it here with Bitcoin first and then we'll dive into Ethereum. Hit you with the Friday daily double here on the good old Friday morning. So let's start off with the three month time frame, which is something that I don't look at very often because it takes so damn long for one candle to print. But this three month candle is about to print. And if we know how to read candlesticks, we know that this is extremely bearish. Why is it bearish? Well, one, it has a short upper wick. So after the price, after the candle opened here, the pr we did not trade up very high after opening. Okay, that's number one. Number two, the body of the candle is extremely long. And you can see that this goes from 58,905 down to where we currently are now at about $33,000. So this is very significant. The other thing is this is at the top of a run. So this is, you know, even more significant in the grand scheme of trends. You see this is kind of just like, you know, um, a bull trend here that we're on on the three-month time frame. This, this three-month candle, what, what will likely happen is no matter where this three-month candle closes, the world's easiest trade, in my opinion, is the trade from the open of three this three month candle to the low of this candle because it, it's going to push down over the next three months. So if you're willing to wait three months for that potential trade to play out, then that's like almost guaranteed money in my opinion. Like the likelihood, I just want to draw this scenario out so uh, to illustrate a point, the likelihood that this candle closes, if we closed right here, and subsequently over the next several months, we just go up from here and go to a new all-time high without breaking the low of this three-month candle and making this a high is so unlikely. We would have to appreciate from where we are now, we would have to appreciate almost 100%. That's so unlikely. It's not impossible for that to happen, but it's unlikely. So this is significant. I just wanted to break this down for people so they see this. The three-month time frame is going to close in about five days and nine hours. And so when this candle closes right now, if we were to close where we are and go to the bottom of the candle, that's 12% right there. So if you think about the you know average return for the S&P 500 over a year, it's like 8 to 12%. So this is 12% and this is over the course of three months likely this is going to play out. More than likely it's going to play out in the first month. So depending on how the monthly time frame looks for Bitcoin. Um, one that closes. So let's look at the monthly time frame for that matter. Monthly time frame. Right now, we are potentially going to have some declining bull volume here. Or I'm sorry, bear volume, depending on how this monthly candle closes. Right now, the candlestick doesn't look very bullish, though, even though it would be declining bear volume. So we want to see some, we want to see a close near the open um, for the most bullish, well, the most bullish scenario is we close somewhere up here, obviously. But um, um, another bullish scenario is we close near the open, which is at 37,281 on this exchange. So we're looking for a higher low to be set here on the monthly time frame f versus our September low here at $9,800. Monthly resistance is the R2 pivot up here likely, uh, and that's up at about 46,1. Weekly time frame. Weekly time frame is potentially forming a uh, bullish divergence here. But now you're seeing this is so we talked about this yesterday. So the RSI changes over the course of the week. So this RSI right now is now below this weekly uh, previous weekly low down here. So now if this weekly candle closes and this RSI is below this low, there's no bullish divergence here. So yesterday this RSI was higher up. It was above this low. So it, this is what I'm talking about with it depends on the price action for the week over the course of the week, what you see uh, at the end of the week. It doesn't matter what happens throughout the week. For a weekly candle, you need the candle to close. For a weekly bullish divergence, you need the candle to close and then you assess the divergence. 
So, so that is looking like it might not play out as of the current moment. We still have two days and nine hours left. So right now we have a lower low, so we're about to potentially confirm a weekly bear trend over the next couple weeks if we see uh, two weekly candle closes below this low at 29,100. So that's important to know. The other thing is we're gonna be watching the volume closely to see if we end up with increasing bear volume or increasing bull volume or declining bear volume. So that's something else that we'll be watching. If we see increasing bear volume, likely this trend will continue. Like I've been talking about, I don't think this light blue level is gonna hold. Uh, even with the liquidity grab here, I, it's, I'm skeptical, I'll say that. Um, so if we break below the light blue zone and we close two candlesticks below it, I will short this on a retest. Um, so we'll see what we get here. Going down to the three-day time frame. Three-day time frame uh, is playing out pretty much how I thought it would, uh, well, since yesterday at night, thought, the way I thought it would. <laughs> Things change in price action pretty quickly. Yesterday's video I talked about us coming up and potentially going into uh, a resistance zone on the two-day time frame, which I'll highlight in a second, and getting my short orders filled there. Um, I'll talk about that trade in a moment, but you can see we did not break the high of the, the three-day time frame. We got close, but we missed it by about $225 on this exchange. And now we're trading down, and now we're just forming like this inside bar. This candle closes in one day and nine hours. It's likely at this point, depending on what we see, we might end up seeing a inside bar here. If we do see an inside bar and then we break above, um, that is going to be two confluent signals saying bullish price action because we'll potentially be seeing a bullish divergence here with a higher low in the RSI and a lower low in price and an inside bar breaking to the upside which typically signals expansion. So those are some signs for the bulls. Uh, three day we don't have really any resistance and we have a long lower wick. So looking good on the three day for the bulls. Two day time frame, not looking good for the bulls. So this is the resistance zone right here. So let's let's pull this up. So this is the zone that we talked about yesterday. This is just simple from our bull trend here. We broke down and now this is resistance on a retest. Now we didn't touch this. You see we got close, but we did not actually touch it and now we're rejecting. So what are we rejecting off of here? Well, let's go to the one day time frame, and we'll see exactly what we are rejecting off of. So this is picture perfect in terms of how this level has played out. So we've been talking about this level since back here in June, June, middle of June, June 13th probably is when we started talking about this level because it became valid. Well, June 14th is probably when we talked about it. Then we go, we, we this, I was talking about it potentially being support here. It did not hold a support. We pushed right through the zone and closed below it. We retest this zone. Now, this is one of the most easiest, this is one of the easiest trades I've taken in a long time. Why is this one of the easiest trades? Well, one, these types of levels always, you know, they hold relatively often. Um, and that's, you know, the, the trend, a support level that's now turning resistance, right? Look at the accuracy of this level. We go into it and just wick, wicked into it and then boom, rejection off of it. I mean, like, it's, and then we look at the volume, declining bull volume three days in a row going into this level. This is, and, you're, and we've already bounced, here's another signal. We've already bounced into this level 23% over, over four days. So those are, that's a bunch of signals telling you the likelihood that we're just gonna, that we're just gonna keep pumping from this low up through this level and we're gonna go right through it is very unlikely. We would have had to go 30% against the, the trend. You look at the other trend following indicators, each mocha cloud, most bearish position it can be in. Super guppy, most bearish position it can be in. So this is like one of the easiest trades in the history of trades. Um, so we talked about this yesterday, the two day, we talked about, I talked about going short on the two day here at this body up here at about 37, 345 right? But now if we look at this from a daily perspective, what happened was I saw these different signals as we were going to this level and I said, the likelihood that we get up even further into this gray zone, which my orders were like up here in the zone, they were near the top, 
is very unlikely given the confluence of these different factors. So then what does that tell me as a trader? Well, that tells me change where your orders are. So then I change my orders from being uh, in this the top part of this level to right at the edge of this level. So this is something I talked about on our Global Lutheria Telegram channel. So if you're not involved in that, you can join that for free in the link in the description below. And I um, outline my different trading ideas that I have. But if we look at that, you know, this trade has already went about 6.53% on spot. So if you're trading on leverage, um, you know, 12, 13% on 2x leverage. So, and this is over the course of like, you know, a couple days. So really good uh, profit for this trade. I'm happy with it. I already took some profits for today where we are now. Um, it's likely that we're going to come down. We're going to form potentially a higher low given the magnitude of this rise in price. We've risen about 23%, like I said. So for us to come down and break to a new lower low on the first go is not as likely in my opinion. It's more likely that we'll end up forming a higher low somewhere and then coming up and forming uh, potentially a higher high or a lower high and then a lower low if we're to break for new lows, which is the more likely scenario because we're in a bear trend. Um, so that's the daily time frame there. Let's go to the four hour. Four hour time frame um, right now, we did not go below this low. We got close on this exchange, but we did not go below. You can see the increasing bear volume here. So um, pretty significant sell off off of this level right here. You can see we ran right into this candle. Boom, we rejected off of it significantly. Um, it's also the daily the daily gray level right here that we're really is what's pushing the price down. Um, but now we're going to see what happens in the next four hours because the next four hours is likely going to wick below this low. So now it'll be, you know, we're going into the S1 hourly support at 32.148. So this is potentially going to be um, somewhere where people will try and go long. We'll see what happens. All right, let's switch over to Ethereum. This is the three month time frame for Ethereum. So if you thought the three month time frame for Bitcoin was bearish, welcome to the longest wick you've ever seen in your entire life. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I mean, this is from 4387 down to $1,700. From, from top to bottom, this candle is 61%. Okay, that is ridiculous. So this, you know, the likelihood that this candle closes in five days and nine hours, it doesn't even matter if it closed up at 2,700, which is never going to happen. Even if it closed there, super long upper wick, still really bearish, and you can take that trade down to the low of the candle, right? This, the, I mean, this, like, going short off of this candle close is another one of the easiest trades in the history of trades because the likelihood that we open the next candle and then subsequently rise 140% is so unlikely. I cannot emphasize that enough. It's so unlikely. When you see the magnitude of moves, you need to consider if it's likely or unlikely that when the next candle opens or closes, or opens rather, uh, we're going to go above or below that. You know, just consider that. So let's go to the monthly, monthly time frame. Um, so right now we have this candlestick right here, which is pretty significant in the sense that we came up, we formed a high, low, higher high, and now we're doing a lower low. So it's just kind of chop here because of this candlestick, this big one. So if this monthly candle closes like this, where it is, I'd expect further downside and the three month time frame by itself is going to push for further downside. So then it's a matter of, okay, where are we going to bounce from? Well, if we pull up the pivots, we can see that, you know, we, we could use the R3 um, pivot here at 1648 as a potential support because, um, you know, resistance to support, we could go with that. The R2 down here at 1200, that's another one. So that's our closest to on that time frame. Now let's if we look at the weekly, we've we've come up right here. We came we had a bull trend, came up high, then we made a lower low, but we just wicked below the low. We did not actually come up here. We we did not actually form a low because we didn't break the highs of this candle, this candle, this candle, or this candle. So we just kept going down. So now we're going down again. 
Now, this blue level, this is still the first test of this technically because this doesn't count as a bounce because it didn't actually form a low here. So this is still the first test of this level, so we could still potentially bounce here, but it becomes increasingly less likely that we will bounce because of the fact that um, the lower time frames are bearish, which we'll talk about in a moment. So if we're a bear, we're looking really good. This level is going to be a level that I will look to go short on if we push right through this zone and close two candlesticks below it. I don't know why I used the measurement tool for that. I was trying to use this tool. <laughs> um, if we push right through this zone, close two candlesticks below it and retest it, I'm going to go short here and then target this weekly candle down here, which is, I know it seems ridiculous now, but that's likely where I'm going to target it, and that's going to be at about 614. So I know it seems pretty ridiculous now, but, you know, these prices seemed ridiculous back when we were down here. So at this point, this, for us to come back and return to this level is not unlikely because there's not a lot of, there's nothing. This is hot air in between here and here. Like if we pull up the VPVR, look at that. There's something right around here. So there's this this kind of area here is our main support. And that's around that $1,200, $1,300 level. If we go below that, there's like nothing. And then we're down here at these, another, uh, these other volume nodes. So potential for Ethereum to drop off a cliff in a good way if you're going short. Very good. Um, Three-day time frame. I'm sorry, we don't need the three-day time frame. What was I doing? I'm talking about the one-day time frame. One-day time frame. And let's get rid of this because this is supposed to be just on the hourly. So when we're looking at this on a one-day perspective here, there's a couple things. So there's really two levels here. And we haven't covered Ethereum in a while. So let's talk about the two daily resistance and support levels. Here's our daily resistance, this red level. This is when we had our bear trend here. Very simple. High, low, lower high, lower low. Okay. We retest this level right here. We wick into it by about $5 right here, and we reject off of it. Okay. Let's look at things like the Ichimoku cloud. Ichimoku cloud is setting up to be in the most bearish scenario. The, t the Kijun is still way up here inside of the cloud, so it's still a ways away, but once this drops below the cloud, this will be in the most bearish scenario, and that will likely propel us through this light blue support zone right here. If we look at the Super Guppy, Super Guppy is beginning to roll over, similar to bit, how Bitcoin is already has, has already rolled over on the one-day time frame, and we're seeing the the dark blue EMAs show up, which are the faster EMAs, and then the gray is potentially going to turn into dark red, which will be strong resistance on the first test. Um, so that will carry the momentum downwards further for Ethereum. The support is over here from our bow trend right here. So this is our candlestick from back here on March 28th. You can see we've already bounced off of this level twice. And so every test of this is getting weaker. So if we test this again, we might end up just pushing through it. Four hour time frame. What in the heck is going on here? Okay. I don't know what that was. Four hour time frame. So if we look at this, this is the level that I'm currently watching. We just had one candle close below this level. So if we close again below this level, this is from our bow trend right here. Oh, actually, you know, I don't like this level as much because I didn't see this wick went below this low. So you know what? Let's, let's, is this, hmm. That did not, I didn't see that the first time. Okay. So really what we're looking at, I guess, is really no significant levels in this area. So if we look at something like the Super Guppy, let's see where that's at. Okay. So the four hour Super Guppy is fully expanded to the bears, the bear side here. You can see we have tested this once here and then twice here. So we've tested the these EMAs twice. Every time you test them, they get weaker. So that's good news for the bulls. But this indicator, we're a ways away from this becoming bullish and flipping back to the bulls' favor. 
If we look at the Ichimoku cloud, most bearish scenario, I love this indicator because as soon as this turned bearish right here, this is when it um, became valid right in this zone. If you went short here and just rode this trend, um, you know, that would have yielded about 21%. And that would have taken about three days and 20 hours, which is pretty ridiculous. Um, so this trend following indicator is pretty good. In terms of an entry here, the entry is on the Kijun using this strategy, right? So you're waiting for an entry on this. And let's actually show Bitcoin because I want to show how beautiful this is. Ichimoku Cloud 4 hour. Look at this. Look at this, folks. We talked about this. This is the entry, the Kijun, back like in here. We talked about it. Perfect right here. Absolutely perfect. We tested it once, we tested it twice, but we didn't go through it. I mean, if we if we zoom in on this, you can see the accuracy of this is just, it doesn't get more accurate than this. Look at this. The bodies of these candles are right at this level. And then boom, rejection down. I mean, that alone, just playing this level down to where we are, 7.74% already. And that's probably not even done. It's probably going to go a bit lower at least down to this S1 at 32.1. So about 8 plus percent over the course of less than a day for this indicator when it's in this pattern. Got to love it. Got to love indicators like that. So that's all I got for this one, guys. If you like this video and you like this analysis, give it a like down below and subscribe for future educational content around cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. And if you haven't already, check out the Global Luthier Telegram channel. The link for that is in the description below as well. You can join that. And really, one of the nice things about this is you're going to be able to collaborate and learn with people from around the world. So we have, we have community members from over 13 different countries already, and that number is growing each week. So definitely check it out. It's free to join, and you'll be able to participate in live community chats each Sunday. You'll be able to ask different questions and get your questions answered in just the day-to-day -day, um, regular chat. And you can you know, take advantage of all the different resources we have in there, like trading ideas that I have, as well as um, pr different projects that we find and a bunch of other stuff as well. So check it out. And until tomorrow, onward and upward.